What's going on everybody? How you doing? In today's video, there's a donation request. This is for Rob. This is Talking Heads. This is The Great Curve. We're going to check this out. If you're new here, please subscribe. Check out my videos, all kinds of videos, reaction videos, bass videos, music videos. Check it out. If you like the channel, you want to support the channel all kinds of ways, you can hit super thanks underneath this video. You can hit me direct in the description. I got PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, Amazon Wishlist, mailing address, and I do donation requests just like this one. So if there's something you want me to watch, listen to, talk about, hit me direct. PayPal, Cash App, Venmo in the notes section. Leave a link, leave a description. Let me know what you want the video to be on and I'll make the video. You can also email me at jpanreadsemail at gmail.com. Thank you guys. Okay, so we checked out the previous song. That was cool, but we're gonna uh, we're gonna check this one out. The Great Curve. Harrison said the ambition was to blend rock and African genres rather than simply imitate African music. Eno's production techniques and personal approach were key to the record's con conception. The process was geared to promote the expression of instinct and spontaneity without overly focusing on the sound of the final product. Eno compared the creative process to looking out to the world and saying, what a fantastic place we live in, let's celebrate it. I think that you could definitely kind of catch some of that in the last song that we just heard, just in terms of like, I mean, when I hear that, all I can think of is dance. It's all I can think of. It's dan just all the rhythms that's happening. I just think of dance, right? which is in and of itself a celebration, right? Sections and instrumentals were recorded one at a time in a discontinuous process. Loops played a key part at a time when computers could not yet adequately perform such functions. Talking Heads developed Remain in Light by recording jams, isolating the best parts, and learning to play them repetitively. The best tracks focused wholly on rhythms and were all performed in a min minimalist method using only one chord like the last song. Each section was recorded as a long loop to enable the creation of compositions through the positioning or merging of loops in different ways. Kind of like how they had different parts of those rhythmic pieces coming in and out, depending. For unlike in the process to modern sampling, we were human samplers, right? After a few sessions in the Bahamas, uh, the engineer left following an argument with the producer over the fast speed of recording. Stephen San Stanley, who since age 70 had engineered for musicians such as Bob Marley, stepped in to cover the workload. Franz credited him with helping create Once in a Lifetime. Yeah, good riddance, the other guy. <laughs> Which was released as a single. A Lexicon 224 digital reverb effects unit obtained by engineer and mixer Dave Jordan was used on the album. The machine was one of the first of its kind and able to simulate environments such as echo chambers and rooms throughout interchangeable programs. Like Davies, Davies, Rhett Davies was the guy that left. Jordan was unhappy with the fast pace at which Eno wanted to record sonically complicated compositions but did not complain. Mmm. 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 Damn. Damn. Listen to that. Interesting. Yeah, I was going to say, this guy, Rhett Davies, sounded familiar. And he's done some stuff. He did a uh, Selling England by the Pound. He did a uh, Robert Palmer. He did a bunch of Brian Eno. Like a, he's worked with Brian Eno before. The Hollies, Dire Straits, King Crimson, B-52s. He's done some stuff. The tracks made Burn rethink his vocal style, and he tried singing to the instrumental songs, but sounded stilted. Few vocal set sections were recorded in the Bahamas. The lyrics were written when the band returned to the U.S. and in, in New York City and California. Harrison booked Talking Heads into Sigma Sound, which focused primarily on R&B music. After convincing the owners that the band's work could bring them a new type of clientele, Burn struggled with writer's block. Burn recorded all the all the tracks as they were after Baloo had performed on them to cassette and looked to Africa to break his writer's block. He realized that when African musicians forget words, they often make up new ones. He used, uh, like, like scat. He used the portable tape recorder and tried to create onomatopoeic rhythms in the style of Eno, who believed that lyrics were never the center of a song's meaning. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Burton continuously listened to his recorded scatting until, wow, there's that word I just used, until convinced, I did not read this ahead of time, until convinced that he was no longer hearing nonsense. After he was satisfied, Harrison invited 
Nona Hendrix to Sigma Sound to record backing vocals for the album. She was advised extensively on her vocal delivery by Byrne, France, and Weymouth, and often sang in a trio with Byrne and Eno. Voice sessions were followed by overdubbing process. Okay. Okay, so this is also on side one, which contains the more rhythmic songs, as I said in the last video. So I'm assuming this may be similar to the last song, where it's just going to be a bed of loops, right? I'm, I'm totally guessing, totally assuming. But we're going to check this out. So let's do it. Bam. You hear the, the reverb that's happening? You hear it in the percussion and in those horns? I mean, you hear it everywhere. You hear it in that guitar. Sometimes the world has a load of questions. Seems like the world knows nothing at all. The world is near, but it's out of reach. Some people touch it, but they can't hold on. Okay. 
Yeah, great guitar. Great guitar. Love it. Love the guitar. Yeah, this is all. This is not about the lyrics, right? I mean, yeah, there's lyrics there. I looked them up because I'm like, all right, what's going on here? But especially with all those, like, you can really hear that, you know, he probably was like, you know, like, whatever. He's just, like, coming up with things. He's just, like, scatting out just melody, whatever. And then, like, you just kind of fill in the lyrics from there. You know, you just fill it in. Okay, this kind of sounds like I'm saying so say so. You know, even though he probably is just literally scatting. Just different things like that. Or making it work with other sections that he's writing, like these verses or whatever. It's like just making it work. Yeah, it's all just rhythm and things coming in and out. Because, and, like, the, the bed of it doesn't change. They may be playing it the whole time, and there may be small differences, but it's that, that's it, right? So this is really just all about top line. To, you know, like the melody, all the stuff underneath. Because everything underneath is just there, it's done. It's there, it's done. They could have looped it all. You know what I mean? They could have looped it all. They didn't, and that's why it has the feel that it does, as Johnny Greenwood was saying. But they could have. He thought that they were just loops, because it's like you're just playing the same thing, right? <laughs> like the rhythm section doesn't change it's not changing you're not changing chords you're not like it's literally just a, just a vamp it's just a vamp which is fine you know like that's where like things like parliament come in and all those kinds of like like funk bands like that where it's like it's you're, you're just doing that the whole time you're just doing that the whole time it's a, and it's just about the trance of it really the trance of it, and then all the crazy, wacky, maybe psychedelic things that you're doing on top of it, right? In this, in this case, top line stuff. Top line is like melody, and they talk about like top line writers, melody, right? Like people that just like get the track and then they have to write a melody over it, right? Top line writers. So that's what this is about, and it sounds like that's what David Byrne was having a hard time with. Sounds like they liked all the music concepts, all that stuff. But then when, I mean, imagine just getting like a blank track and it's just like this the whole time, six and a half minutes or however long this is. Yeah, six and a half minutes. You're just like, what are you going to do with this? <laughs> you know? Yeah, what are you going to do with this? Yeah. One of the songs I did uh, with uh, Earth, Wind & Fire is kind of, in a way, like this. It's just like, I mean, there were there were changes like there's a chorus, but the rest of the song is like this. It's like it's just a, a bass part. I wrote the bass part. Right. And then there's like just the melodic stuff and the rhythms that are going on underneath it. All of that. So I get it. I get it. I get it. That's what it's about. It's not the same. In like I said, there's like an actual chorus where it does change and there's different changes. But conceptually, like the verse is like similar to this anyways there's similarities i understand the right is all i'm saying it's like uh it's like uh it's like the verse is basically like this so it's like a condensed kind of thing but then it's like yeah anyways very cool yeah very cool it's cool so something else that i'm thinking about because you're you're probably thinking like uh this is pretty weird stuff, right? Pretty weird music, but you weren't as crazy about They Might Be Giants, which is pretty weird music also. You just thought it was just like, you kept on saying this is just weirdo music. This is weird, it's weird, it's weird. This, I have something to latch on to, right? It's not just weird and crazy and kooky and I'm just like, maybe if I listened to it more, I would be into it. They had so many albums. I'm sure that maybe there were other songs and specific things that if I were to more dive into their discography, I would be into it. You know, I'd find the stuff that I'm into, basically. But this, it's like, okay, the rhythm and all this stuff, this baser stuff is not changing. So, like, you can lock in with that. And then it's just all the melodic, all that top line stuff that changes that's different, but it's still kind of wacky and... and things are flying at you and all these vocal parts and you know all this stuff is just getting thrown at you it feels like it feels like there's a lot of activity even though so much of it isn't changing <laughs> isn't that wild yeah so very cool so yeah i like i like it i like it it's great it's great stuff very cool
All right, amazing. Talking heads, classic. Cool, all right, awesome. Thank you guys. I'll catch you in the next video.